Hey everybody, this is Bob from MusicStoreLive.com and today I am joined by Anthony Gunter from Orange. He is head of international sales for Orange Amps. That's correct, yes. Oh, wonderful, thanks so much for being here with us. Pleasure to be here, thank you very much for inviting me up. Could you speak to some of the first earliest adopters of the Orange sound and how they helped to contribute to really bring the amps out to the larger public? Fleetwood Mac were probably one of the biggest ones that started off with it. Nice. Um, Stevie Wonder was using it, Paul Kossoff was playing it. Um, we, we had a lot of early success with some of the bigger artists at the time. I mean, as I say in the book, there are pictures of Zeppelin, Clapton, Tina Turner. So there was a real good history from the nice. very beginning. We were very lucky that we had a, a nice spread and a good genre of music in the but, early days. That's great. And here's, here's a little side note. So just uh, in case anyone's curious, orange amps, the color. Why uh, orange? Tricky question. Uh -huh. It was Cliff's favorite color. Simple as that. That's 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 all you. He need. understood even <laughs> then that the significance of being able to stand out on a on a big stage and the significance of standing out in a room full of amplifiers when everything else is black. Yeah. But the honest answer is, it was his favorite color. That's pretty pretty brilliant um, thinking, you know, for for a new company. I know I know how people will recognize us. We'll be the biggest brightest amps on the stages. It's perfect. It does tend to work. <laughs> it does. <laughs> cool. I feel like a lot of people may have. Um, like a conception that some of the orange amps, or at least, or, or most of the orange amps, are more geared towards really heavy rock players. And for, let's say, like a blues or a country style player, uh, they may think, oh, you know, no, that's that's the stuff that the, like the heavy metal guys use. You know, it's not for me. But I have always found these amps to be very warm and palatable for uh, for blues and, and country style playing. Um, just any thoughts on, on, on that kind of part of the market? <clears throat> it's quite interesting you say that because probably seven or eight years ago we were being pigeonholed as a an indie blues amp because of the artists that were using us. We had some, uh, the second coming really was the early 90s. We had Noah Gallagher from Oasis, was one of the first of the modern era of, of musicians that, that came on board with us. And from there we had a number of quite indie type bands. And we were pigeonholed for quite some time as being an indie blues older guys amp. Uh -huh. Then we came up with, our designer came up with the uh, the revolutionary Tiny Terror, which changed the game completely on amplification. Mm -hmm. um, in the background, he was already updating some of those sounds that give us the family of Rockerverb, Thunderverb. So that's where we've gone with it. We've we've come out of being a pigeonhole indie blues amp and realized we had to appeal to, to more types of genre of music and the rock music was was one of those places we needed to go. Who, who are some of the biggest orange endorsed artists at the moment that you guys are working with? We work with Jim Root from Slipknot, we work with right. Geddy Lee, we work with Glenn Hughes, we work with Madonna, we work with Paloma Faith, we work with Justin Timberlake, CeeLo Green. The list is really endless. I mean, we, we've got a very, very strong artist roster and we've got a very good team of guys who look after our artists. We probably have one of the, uh, we like to boast we've got one of the best artist loan pools in the world because through our distribution network, we ensure that our artists are looked after anywhere they're touring in the world. The Tiny Terror amp, we were talking about this last night. Um, I remember actually where I was, first time I walked into a club and saw a Tiny Terror. And um, I remember walking into one of my favorite local clubs here in Burlington, seeing a guitar player and thinking to myself, this is one of the best guitar sounds I've ever heard in this club. And he was running uh, his, his, main, his main amp, he was also running a a Leslie and I looked up on top of the Leslie cabinet and there was this little amp with a handle on it and I thought what the hell is that <laughs> that sounds amazing um, so the lunchbox amps the tiny terror it launched this huge craze yeah. you know um, where are things at with the lunchbox amps these days where is this market going again I think we are very very lucky I remember the uh, the first conversation I had with our designer aid about the lunchbox app and we were having a a glass of orange juice at an AM show. And he described to me how he was going to build an amplifier that would fit on a piece of A4 paper. And as you do, having maybe two or three glasses of orange juice, I came back from Los Angeles and forgot about it. And about three months later, I had a phone call saying, I've done it. And I said, you've done what? He said, I've built that amp that fits on a piece of A4 paper. I won't tell you what I actually said, but it was, really? <laughs> um, then I was up at the office about two weeks later and went down into uh, to the design studio and he said, listen to this. And I can only describe to you, like you were just saying, it was almost as if I'd seen the light all of a sudden. And it created something that I love to call the orange smile because I hawked that amplifier around pretty much every dealer that we had in the UK. 
and the reaction that we had was exactly what you were describing. Mm -hmm. People would look at this tiny little lunchbox, it looks like a little toaster, and this incredible guitar sound was coming out of this tiny little box. Mm -hmm. After decades of Orange Amps being synonymous with rock and roll, killer, recognizable guitar tone, how, and, and all of the changes you have to make over the decades to stay current and to stay with your players and, and the demands that, you know, to meet, to meet the demands of changing players over the years, how do you stay tied to your roots as a company? I think we're very lucky that we still have Cliff at the helm of the company, so he remembers what made the company great from the early days and that's instilled in all of us. We have a real simple ethos at Orange. We look at products all the time, we look at what we're doing and when we look at bringing out a new product we actually say to ourselves, can we do it better than the existing one that's out there? And if we can't, we just don't bother because there's no point in bringing out something that we don't think is the best. If it's going to have the Orange name on it, we have to believe that it's the best. I think again we're, we're a little bit different, we don't try and follow what other people do. We're innovators, as you'll see, with the valve tester, with the OPC, with the Devo. We try to take it down our road. We don't want to try and follow everybody else. We like other people to follow us. <laughs> That's a good place to be. Uh, well, let's hope <laughs> we can keep that. Okay, good. Well, Anthony Gunter uh, from Orange Amps. I'm Bob from Music Store Live. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.